Welcome back, homies, to Achievements Are Impossible, where we 100% games and give ourselves an even more difficult achievement to complete. This episode, we have Sackboy A Big Adventure. Many may know this cute dude from Little Big Planet, and from my understanding, it's essentially another game in the title series. Sackboy is a platformer where you race against the clock, collect items, team up with friends, and challenge evil as it tries to take the world you know. There are 46 achievements in the game, so we have a bit of work cut out for ourselves here, but please note I'm not including any multiplayer achievements as I tried to do those with random people and I could not consistently coordinate any of them. Also please note that throughout these clips you'll see my face cam is in them as I do these achievement hunts live with my homies every Tuesday and Thursday nights on Twitch. There's a cool feature for watching me long enough and having me paint my face or do other things like Fortnite emotes, which is why in some clips I'll be looking like an artistic masterpiece. We start off with Sackboy vibing in his hometown and suddenly Vex, the bringer of nightmares, enters and starts stealing all the townspeople to work for him on his topsy turver so Vex can rule the land. He tells us he plans to take over the whole Imagiverse before trying to steal us as well. We use our quick thinking and fly off in a rocket. This starts us on our first level. For each level in the game, there are different medals to earn. The Ace Medal for making it through on our first life. The Present Medal for collecting all the costume items and dreamer orbs. The level's bubble score. And sometimes nightly energy, which will let us access time trials, but I'll save those for later. After getting all the gold medals on our first level, we unlock Master of One. A lady named Scarlet scares us out of nowhere and explains we'll need to collect the big bubbles throughout the world as they hold the power to destroy the uproar and corruption walls that Vex have planted to prevent us from getting any closer to them. We are greeted with the first wall to push back after our first level, giving us Daydream Believer. We meet Zoom Zoom, who explains he sells the best costumes and threads. He also gives us some bells to use at his shop. As we progress later, he does drop genie lamps for us to earn more bells and spend at his shop. A few levels later, Scarlet meets us again and explains the Knitted Knight system, which is essentially co-op or multiplayer. This unlocks teamwork levels, which presents a challenge as I usually do these solo. We'll skip these for now and come back to them later as well. Moving forward, we find a level with our first nightly energy, giving us our first knitted night stage. We complete it to see how the time trials go, and unlock Knights of Gold for getting a gold rank. We encounter our first remix level, which is a level where the obstacles and platforming are based off of a song. I love these levels as they're a huge vibe. After navigating the bass and drums, we unlock Remix Master. We also unlock Fashionista for picking up a full costume set from the costume collectibles throughout the levels. At the end of the first world, we face Vex, who teases us with the progress he's made for the Topsy Turver and what he intends to do next. After almost defeating him, he sends us to another dimension and heads out, giving us You've Got Potential Squire. We make our way to the second world, the Colossal Canopy, where we meet Mama Monkey who lets us know that Vex is trying to steal her monkeys and bananas, and we have to help them. We get a boomerang propeller thing for some of these levels now. It can help us take out some enemies, collect bubbles, and activate certain environmental items. This helped us get Bubble Binger for collecting 30 time bubble chains, multitasking for defeating enemies simultaneously 10 times, and Pop and Lobber for defeating enemies from a distance. Continuing our adventure in World 2, we also unlock Bouncer for bouncing off of 30 enemies, Slide Away for collecting 3,000 points while sliding, and Multimaster for getting all gold medals on 10 levels. Now we're just left with the boss. The boss shows us how our friends are doing and sends out a vexed Marmapede. After fighting the Marmapede and defeating it, we earn Metameric Milady. Scarlet jumps out of nowhere again and tells us we're doing great, but Vex is headed for World 3, the Kingdom of Crablantis. In World 3, we meet King Bugoff, who gives us a slingamajig to help collect gold for him. We also can use it as a grappling hook kind of deal. We can now grapple onto sponges and grab items from a distance to throw. With this, we throw objects at enemies to stun them 30 times, unlocking Stunner. While we use our grappling hook to swing, 
we accidentally get Gymnastic Fantastic by performing four aerial moves before touching the ground. As we've gotten more collectibles, we unlock Walk-In Wardrobe for collecting 300 costume items. We've also gotten more Ace Medals, giving us Amazing Ace for 30 medals total. We head to the boss, and I was a bit confused here, but I believe King Bugoff has scammed us and says the only way to become civil again is to defeat Vex. We take care of Vex and he runs off again. This gives us Sonar so good. Scarlet hops out of nowhere to reassure us that we're doing an amazing job so far, and that we should head to the Interstellar Junction to stop Vex. Upon arriving, we meet Naomi, who's an AI overseer of the Interstellar Junction. We unlock plasma pumps, which we can use to hover and fire plasma blasters. There wasn't much eventful here in terms of achievements, but we did unlock Golden Boy for getting gold on 50 levels. We carry on to find out Naomi has been taken over by the Vex. We defeat her and she snaps back to her old self. Vex appears now and lets us know that we've fallen right for his trap all along, as he needed a pure soul to gather up all of the dreamer orbs for him to steal. Vex then takes our dreamer orbs and sends us into his topsy turver. We continue our adventure in the topsy turver. I haven't mentioned yet, but there's a lettuce dude that sometimes gives us dream orbs hidden around certain levels. We found him for the final time and earned the naturalist achievement. We keep pushing through and battle Vex again. After defeating him, he backs off to the core of his topsy turver, unlocking Vex Vanquisher. At the core, we ultimately fight him again, win again, and unlock Verified Vex Vanquisher. Now that he's gone, we unlock a bonus world called the Wonder Plane. After completing all the levels there, we unlock Wonder Plane Workout. After the main story, we tackled the Knitted Knight Trials, which are timed levels we unlocked as we picked up those Rubik's Cube pieces. Believe it or not, they were fairly easy until we got to the final challenge. It's a collaboration of every trial so far, all in one run. We have to beat it in under 10 minutes for the gold medal and the achievement. If we fail in any way, we must start from the beginning. After trying for hours, we finally get it and unlock String It Together. Now we have some backtracking for achievements. We head back to Monkey Business and get out of bounds for throwing 30 minions off the map. Next, we go to Highs and Glows and complete the level without using the Boomerang Propeller to unlock Cut It Out. Then we head over to Having a Blast and run about 8 circles while holding a Boombo Beehive to unlock B Arg B. We hit up Zoom Zooms to create a custom emote unlocking Thespian and a custom outfit unlocking Icon of Style. We head over to the Knitted Knights Trial 11 and unlock Player's Player by picking up our last collectible weapon on a level. I've been doing these along the way as they're spread out across 8 missions. Now for my personal achievement which is to beat all the teamwork levels by myself. This requires me to use two controllers and use both characters myself. My original theory was that I would end up using one controller, picking up the second sack boy, and hauling them throughout the level. While that did work, it only worked for the first level, literally. Although there were one to two teamwork levels per world, they rapidly ramped up not in terms of platforming difficulty, but in the sense of timing and cooperation with your teammates. At some points, I was using both my hands, my chest to stabilize, and my mouth to perform various button combinations. When I could, I attempted to line both characters up so that the movements would generally be the same on both controllers. The second to last co-op level was by far the trickiest one, where you descend some kind of tower with lasers coming down on you. What gave me the most trouble about it was the fact that the sack boys kept switching what side they were on, immediately disorienting my hands. Eventually, I realized I should pause the game every time there was a swap so I could move the controllers physically and my hands could be more grounded. Eventually, that helped me beat the level. As always, that's all the achievements, homies. Let me know if you liked the video, if you have a harder challenge for me to pursue within reason, or what game I should try to 100% next. Love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.